Well, I say idiot. T equals T. T is self-entitled. Something that that machine cannot do. Remember that. Okay? And it isn't clever, it's dumb. It means it's got a certainty you know letter can ne- no letter can ever incipher as itself. So the third word there is T Z X. T we assume is T, X we assume is E, it's English. So have a guess what Z probably is. Okay. So every way you see a Z, you substitute an H, and it just tumbles out. And it says one of the reasons for cipher this text is to show the reader how easily this type of cipher can be broken. The word structure of the plain text is being preserved to make the exercise easier. Because I know the third word got three letters in it, that's got three, that's got four. In reality, it would never be that easy. But I'm assuring it to you, to get over to you, it is not just the numbers that count. We're talking about four billion, billion, billion. And the IT security people, of which I was born, are still filling you with the same utter trite rubbish and border dust. Yeah. They're still obsessed with numbers. Only recently, in the last two or three years, has it really dawned on them okay, that the attacks don't come mathematically, they come, shall we say, much more psychologically. The triumph of Bletchley Park is not just technology, it is psychology. At Bletchley Park, we're not going to break the machine, we're going to beat the system. Okay. Your machines at home, your PCs at home, <coughs> make, sorry, you, you make mistakes. You think your computer has made a mistake. It doesn't. <laughs> I've been around the stupid things for <coughs> four years. I can assure you, computers do not make mistakes. For the very simple reason, they're not clever. You have to be clever to make a mistake, not stupid. So that's your health test. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when I say a mistake, I'm talking about a spontaneous shift in the context. A computer is so idiotically stupid, it does exactly as it's told. Human beings are far too clever, clever, to do exactly as they're told. And any system that relies crucially on human beings doing as they're told is doomed to failure. And that's what killed Enigma. If the Germans had obeyed their own written rules, instructions and procedures, we would not, not have been able to break it. The culture of the British war films of the 1950s, Germans are no different to anybody else, and they don't obey instructions either. Okay. There appears to be some strange thing in the, I don't know, the lower command in the German forces that assuming that people do do as they're told. We know, certainly in our armed forces, that people don't do as they're told. And there's a sergeant or a corporal waiting to hit him on the head, okay, when you don't follow the instructions. But time and time and time again, German operators did things that they should never have done. First of all, they should know they shouldn't have done it, so they are probably badly trained. And plus, there's nobody checking on them. We have whole, shall we say, groups of people doing nothing else but checking on our own people. I don't mean we didn't make mistakes. We did. We do, certainly. But nothing like the average German operation. (coughs) They get better and better as the war goes on. Because intelligence is always better on the defensive when you're on the defensive than when you're on the offensive. And when you start off with something like Blitzkrieg, lightning war, pretty much you couldn't care less about intelligence. We're being attacked, so we can say concentrate on intelligence very much so at the beginning of the war. Believe it or not, we get less and we get more and more lax as the war goes on as we go on the offensive. The Germans get better and better and better as they get more and more on the defensive. Right. Leaked to the end of the war. Churchill said, I don't want anybody to know what happened in this place. I want everything burnt, broken, and smashed up. I want anybody to know what happened here. Okay. Nobody knew anything for 30 years. Nobody knew that the world's first computer was here in 1944. You're nodding. I studied, studied it in 76. Now, in fact, there were Americans who did know, of course, because there were nearly 300 Americans here. And you sent over your creme de la creme, superb people. Believe it or not, the first Americans were here at the beginning, the beginning of 1941. It was a year before America officially came into the war. There were already, already some here. Yes. But certainly, <coughs> the world's first computer was here 
up and running, really, end of January, beginning of February 1944. Nobody knew that in the end, from 186 people that came this time 70 years ago, five years later, there's going to be getting over 10,000 people here. The amazing thing is nobody ever talked about This is the absolutely amazing thing. Okay? So, we're now going to go outside. Let's go back to that door, we'll turn left and left again. Okay? And uh, I'll tell you what went on in various places. Any immediate questions now? <coughs>